Amid the clouds dimming the outlook for 2023, two things persist on investors' radars, fear and opportunity. The fear is in the recession biting painfully and there's a fear of an economic slowdown that will hit us maybe in job cuts or even pay freezes and things like that. But that part more or less is a known, known outcome. What is unknown to many, which I believe is the part of the opportunity as the world uh, changes a landscape from a highly inflationary a rapidly uh, falling inflation rate. Whether one takes the half full or half empty perspective, personal finance experts agree that preserving cash should be the top priority for 2023. In the backdrop of this uncertainty, very important is to have lots of cash buffers. Uh, traditional uh, financial planners will ask you to plan for three to six months. I'm asking everybody to go for a longer period, okay? Where I think a nine to 12 months kind of financial buffer is important. We don't expect the government to lower the interest rate just yet. And well, there could be recession and that's going to impact the equities market. So 2023 might still be a year whereby you might be hit either whether you're in equities or bonds. As inflation and job security worry Singaporeans this year, the best strategy may just be a return to the basics. Spend less, save more and start investing. Right? So the only way to mitigate rising cost of living is to find ways to spend less if you want to travel, maybe go to somewhere that is closer. And once you're able to spend less and you have got good surplus, then save more. So if you have got sufficient cash, uh, invest now. For financial blogger Dawn Cher, going back to basics is a good budgeting hack. Switching house brands can very quickly help you trim off 30 to 40%. I'm ready to switch brands if it calls for it. Having seen several market peaks in troughs since she started blogging in 2014, Dawn is adopting a prudent approach to her investment portfolio this year. So what I do is to prepare for a range of outcomes and then I keep adjusting as the different outcomes or scenarios play out. So I talk a lot about like, you know, fixed income and high yield savings accounts, but that is really only for my liquid funds, my emergency funds. When it comes to like my actual investable assets, I'm not taking on lower risk with these at all. I think the ultimate stress test for me is when I can sleep at night. Over the past year, higher inflation has eroded confidence among Singaporeans as they fear not having enough for retirement. Retirement savings is a critical piece of our long-term savings and inflation um, is, a, is the worst enemy. Um, so a sustained increase in long-term inflation from, let's say, 1%, which we saw in the past, to 3%, leads to almost a 50% decline in retirement savings over 30 years. According to Endowers, Singaporeans remain risk-averse. Its latest retirement survey shows that Singapore households hold more of their assets in Central Provident Fund, or CPF, and life insurance compared to shares and securities. The only thing that will beat inflation over the long term is not fixed deposits or these uh, bond-like uh, uh, short-duration products, but really investing in financial markets, especially equity markets and asset classes that will compound and grow over the long term. We're going to see a powerful recovery in the stock market. I've been uh, buying consistently, you know, uh, and, and buying more when the market crashed more. And just buy, 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 buy. And once I hit uh, a certain targeted, um, targeted amount that I want to invest, I just hold it and hold it for 10, 20 years. And Dowers says companies that show potential for higher earnings and pricing power could be in favour in the equity space. So it's a balanced market. Uh, where I think interest rates uh, will stay high, uh, but inflation will start coming down, which means that a balanced portfolio, whether it's a 40% equity, 60% fixed income, or a 60% equity, 40% fixed income, will make a strong comeback in 2023. As a rule of thumb, portfolio allocation should be based on one's need for returns and the ability and willingness to take risks. 
if you were to give me $100,000 right now to invest, so I would put the majority of it, 40%, into a broad-based market index. I think on the whole, the market has gone down by a significant percentage since the bull market highs. So it's a good time to start DCAing, uh, dollar cost averaging in. The next thing I would do is um, 20% to real estate. So REITs, in particular, well-managed REITs. So I would go 20 more percent into equities that I strongly believe in. So stocks and companies that have very strong fundamentals, the last 20%, I would go with a turnaround play, just to potentially profit from the recovery plays that haven't already been priced in. For those near retirement, they can sell some stocks for buffer money if they've made good gains in the past years. Experts say it will be best to avoid taking loans and investors must take every opportunity to put their short-term cash to work. So a spot for choice really, the FD rates hitting 4%, uh, Singaporeans getting very excited over the high yield of uh, T-bills, six months or one year T-bills. Uh, so there are a lot of places actually to park your money. In the end, experts say the best strategy could be to just stay put and wait until the wind blows over. If you are thinking of jumping ship and changing that job, maybe now is not a good time, unless you are very certain that the next ship that you are jumping into is going to provide you that stability no matter what happens to the market. So keep your job. Because as long as you have income, actually you have lesser things to worry about.